Good morning everyone, it's just gone 5 a.m. and today I'm embarking on a journey and undertaking a challenge which I've had in my mind ever since before I even bought this car. This is going to be probably one of the most difficult things I've ever attempted on this channel but I have high confidence in this Maserati. We're going to be driving all the way to the Nürburgring this morning using only one tank of fuel but with a twist at the end so stay tuned and you'll see what that is. First things first we've got to start this very loud quicksilver car up at home just gone five but I'll make this as painless as possible for the neighbours. That's very loud okay if I put it into gear it will get quieter. I normally like to let the car idle for a few more seconds but it is early so let's just get out of here sorry everybody okay so just over 100 pounds of fuel exactly of supreme unleaded 100 pounds and 5 pence 68.2 liters this car has a 90 liter fuel tank which is pretty substantial actually had about a quarter so that makes sense but the combined average if you go online of this car is 19.2 mpg and we're going to need quite a lot more than that to do what we're going to do today i've reset the trip computer down here and i'm going to be watching this very very closely to see how well we're doing let's go instantly into drive then and off we go and I'm going to put the car across into manual so that I've got control of the gears hopefully then I'll get a slightly more efficient return I will say though I'm not going to be doing this like uncomfortably I've got the air conditioning going I've got my heated seat on I've got the rear windscreen heat on as well so I'm going to be using the car as I want to use it but just trying to eke the absolute most out of this engine and the first thing we have to do is accelerate onto a dual carriageway which is a little bit challenging when you're trying to return the best figures currently 9.3 miles per gallon after half a mile so we've started our journey just outside Guildford in Surrey at an SO fuel station along the hogs back now from here we've got a 92 mile run to Folkestone where we're going to catch the Euro Tunnel. The Euro Tunnel will spit us out in Calais where we've got 292 miles to go to the entrance of the Nürburgring. Now why would we be going to the entrance of the Nürburgring I hear you ask? Well that's because that's where the twist is with this challenge. Not only do we have to complete the 384 miles to the Nürburgring on this one tank of fuel in the Quattro Vorte, but then once we arrive <laughs> we've got to complete a lap of the Nordschleife at the Green Hell on that same tank of fuel. If it goes well then I'll have the lap of a lifetime because the car will be really light with not much fuel in it. If it goes badly well then I don't even want to think about it and as you can see with the full tank currently this car is indicating a range of 225 miles including the lap of the Nürburgring we've got 397 miles to complete today. So a few more quick figures for you. With the 19.8 gallon fuel tank this car has and the theoretical combined average MPG of 19.2, that gives us a theoretical total range of 380 miles. And we need more than that to complete everything we're doing today. But that doesn't even take into account the fact that the lap on the north side here is obviously not going to be good fuel economy. And also we're getting the Euro tunnel. I've never done this before. I've never crossed borders on one of these challenges and we've got to potentially queue up to get on the train, queue up to drive on the train, idle a bit when we drive out. And this is all going to be really detrimental to our range. But having said all that, I can't quite believe this, but we've done 13 and a half miles. We've just been going up the A3, we've done 60, 62 miles an hour. We've now just slowed down into an average speed check, which the whole Southeast of England seems to be average speed checks now and we've we've averaged 31.3 miles per gallon and the car is telling me that we have a range of 750 miles I mean if that's true we can you know, sod doing the lap and I mean we'll, we'll do the lap we'll do another lap and then we'll drive home I can't quite believe this this is a Ferrari built essentially 
4.2 litre V8, and it was optimised for power at the time. High revving, 7,500 RPM, 400 horsepower. Most of that's at the top. And I've got 31.9 MPG. Okay, something's not right. Either this is an Italian computer and it's being a little bit whoop, or it's just way more efficient than I'd anticipated for. I think this unexpected good news, oh God, that went everywhere. Calls for a can of Pepsi. Mm. Oh, it's gone all over me. Nothing like spilt Pepsi at five to six in the morning. Whilst we let that sink in, now would be a great time to have a quick word from today's video sponsor. Let me say a big thank you to my friends at Carly for sponsoring this video. Now, if you haven't heard of Carly by now, then it's time that you do, because for years this has been an essential tool that I always carry with me in my cars. Carly allows you to plug into your car and diagnose any faults and clear fault codes, as well as a bunch of customization opportunities amongst much, much more. It's very simple. All you have to do is locate your OBD port in your car, plug your Carly adapter into the car, connect via the app, and you'll be greeted with all of these wonderful possibilities. And in this lovely 2024 Audi S8 that I've kindly been lent, there's a plethora of functionalities that are now available to us. In fact, in the coding section on here, you can remove things such as that annoying seatbelt warning. You can change some functionalities with what goes on on your multimedia display. We can read all of the car's computers by pressing diagnostics and read all of the car's issues, although I'm pleased to report as it's a 2024 pretty much brand new car, there are no current issues. Another fantastic feature is this free used car check. You simply put in your number plate and it gives you a bunch of information about whether the car's been damaged, its mileage, whether that's been tampered, as well as some information regarding the stats of your car, which is always, I find, quite difficult to find these days. Performance figures, fuel economy figures, etc., etc. Moreover, with Carly, you can gain access to comprehensive repair guides, live data monitoring with your vehicle, and you can even monitor the progress of your battery's health. So if you haven't got a Carly yet and you're intrigued by this, then make sure you head to the Carly website now, put in your vehicle's registration plate, and you can see all of the features that will be available to you when you buy a subscription to Carly. And if you would like to go ahead and get yourself an adapter, you can use my link and code in the description to get yourself a nice discount. Thank you so much to Carly for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to it. So we're just coming off on the Channel Tunnel exit and uh, we've made good time actually. I've been sat on cruise control at around 65, 70 miles an hour at times and our fuel consumption average is 31.9. I'm genuinely quite dumbfounded by that because, well, there was just no real indication that this car would be capable of such good figures. But this is where it's gonna get interesting because obviously if you've ever got the Eurotunnel before, there's a fair amount of queuing. You obviously have to queue up at the barriers in a minute, which hopefully the queue won't be too long. Then you park up and then you drive around again, queue more for passport control and then queue again to get on the train. And I think that is going to ruin some of the hard work that we've just done getting this 31.9. But then once we get a through to France, and Belgium than Germany, it should be fairly plain sailing as long as there's no traffic. So, I don't know, let's just see how this goes. So I'm just trying to roll as slowly as possible, but we're gonna have to stop. Oh, and I don't have a window, so I've got to do it this way. Okay, good news. It's given me an earlier train. I was on the 818, but now we're going to get on the 747. It's good to actually get across slightly earlier because there is a time element to this challenge as well because the Nordschleife or the Tourist and Farten open days for the public and the weekdays are only open between 5 and 7 p.m. Now, if all being well, especially now, we should get there well before 5, but if there's any traffic or anything like that, I don't want to risk the chance of missing out. That would be a big shame, wouldn't it? So, let's look at the screens. I'd imagine I'll need to go straight through, actually. Right, here we go. Passport control. Which lane do we go for? I'm gonna go over here. I've committed. Right, this is the killer now. So we got through passport control, the first one, and uh, they were gonna stop me for a security check and then they didn't, thankfully. 
average down to 31.3, but now we are in a queue for the uh, French passport control. Surprise, surprise. I don't know, you've got to be careful what you say on the internet these days, but I mean, there's always a queue at the French passport control. It just I can just hear the sound of the fuel just being suckled away. I think if we manage to get on the train with an average of above 29 mpg, I think we're going to be doing okay. Because I am wary that this computer could be optimistic. Ah, oh, we've definitely gone in the wrong lane here. I could have been behind that blue mini. Ugh. This is a disaster. <laughs> Right, we're on a roll. We finally got through the French passport control. I mean, this is brilliant. I'm literally, huh, I can't believe this. I'm just coasting down to the Euros. I've never done this before. There's literally not a single ounce of traffic. And I always try and book to say I have a large vehicle, but it seems to do it by number plate now. It doesn't let you choose or specify. And look how far I've got to drive down here. I mean, this is good for my fuel economy, bad for my wheels, although I suppose I have to do this anyway. 30.2 miles per gallon average. It's looking pretty good, and I'm literally the first one on this train. So, we've okay. stopped on the Eurotunnel. This is it now. 30.2 average. This is looking good. This is really good. So, we're just pulling in now to sunny France, which is lovely. And we've got, looking at the route, uh, just under 300 miles to go. Go along the top of France, across into Belgium, and then Germany, uh, around Aachen here. It's not giving us a range at the moment, but 30.2 miles per gallon is our average so far. So at the moment, all looks good. We've used, well, we've done 94 miles, and apparently, according to the needle here, used almost a quarter of a tank. So on that maths, we've only got maybe another 300 miles of range and obviously 300 miles to do. Plus we have to do a proper lap of the Nürburgring as well when we arrive. So I think this is still gonna be quite interesting. Fingers crossed we get off this pretty easily. And then hopefully the traffic, especially around Belgium, it seems to get really busy there. Hopefully it's not too bad. We don't get held up in any sort of stop start stuff because that will really kill us. Okay, it looks like we're starting to move up ahead. So this is the moment of truth. Obviously we'll start the car. Hopefully it starts okay. Here we go. It started and that's it. We're at the front of the train already. That was really good. Honestly, that's probably the most efficient Euro tunnel experience I've ever had. And this is the time that I really needed it. Now let's try and be really gentle getting out of here. Welcome to France, everyone. So we're off the train, we're on the road and 30.2 miles per gallon indicated on my trip computer there so i mean that i'm really very very pleased with how that went it couldn't it couldn't have gone any better actually i'm not gonna lie that was fantastically efficient so our range is 441 kilometers and we have 469 kilometers to the nurburgring doesn't get better than this does it tuesday morning driven into france in my maserati in the sunshine following a ferrari perfect everyone so quick update as you can see we're not driving I've just pulled up here outside of Belgium to have a stop for lunch and I think the average is about 31.6 mpg and I've been cruising at 110 kilometers an hour which is just shy of 70 so this is going a lot better than I had planned for there was no way I expected it to do this well Ladies and gentlemen, we are just about to cross from Belgium into Germany and we are almost exactly on half a tank of fuel. So far today, I've completed 459 kilometers in the Maserati and we've only got 182 kilometers to go. Our current fuel range is 785 kilometers. 
I mean, this is absolutely nuts. I'm in two minds really as to whether to continue with this efficiency because I'm very aware that we're about to hit the de-restricted German autobahn. And well, I would love to stretch the legs of this car and see how fast we can go, but obviously that would eat up vital fuel. But it is very tempting given that we've still got half a tank as we cross into Germany to just send it. Having said that, if you do want to see me attempt a top speed run in this Maserati Quattroporte and see how close it can get to the quoted top speed from back in the day, then subscribe now and stay tuned because that video will be coming up very soon. So we're in Germany now, there's no speed limit. I can't help myself. I just want to give it a little bit of a <laughs> a little bit of a run. I can't believe on a fuel economy challenge I'm able to do a little bit of top speeding. But yeah, still 583 kilometres of range with just 142 kilometres to go. I was, uh, yeah, still gobsmacked. Let's just... Let's give it a little bit. This is going to eat the fuel up. And that's a nice steady... 110 miles an hour, about 175 kilometers an hour there, that was nice. What an incredible engine this is, because not only is it pretty fast, we're finding out today as well that it's pretty efficient. I mean, the car itself is, is big, it's over, I think, or very nearly two tons. But I would imagine the body is quite slippery, it's fairly aerodynamic, I suppose, as saloons go. I would imagine it had one of the lowest drag coefficients of any sort of sports saloon at the time. Here we go, there's no speed limit again. So let's maybe, let's just have a little bit of fun, but not too much. That average is still on 31.9, despite the fact we just went up to uh, 115 miles an hour. Foot down now, 80 miles an hour, 90 miles an hour, 100 miles an hour. <laughs> Top of third gear around 105 miles per hour. You can hear the overruns on that exhaust. If you've never driven on the German de-restricted autobahn, you absolutely have to in your lifetime if you're a petrol head because coming from a country where speed limits are strict, quite low and also severely enforced, it's just otherworldly to come somewhere that looks almost so familiar, but you've got people in VW Tiguans pushing you out the way when you're doing 130 miles an hour in a Maserati. It's, I mean, it's utterly fantastic absolutely fantastic i love this country we've got a really clear run ahead so i just can't resist doing another little run and then this will probably have to be it otherwise i'm going to eat all that fuel up not difficult to get up to 140 odd miles an hour that was <laughs> this thing is wonderful right I'm now gonna slow down a little bit try and preserve the fuel that we've got doing that though has only brought my MPG down by one so I think we're okay <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, can you believe it? I am here. I'm at the Nürburgring. It's done it with absolute ease. I mean, I was thinking about how I would make this video suspenseful, and normally, you know, it's not really a challenge. They are just really suspenseful because when I do the calculations for these, I try and find a destination that's not only interesting or significant in some way, but that will also correlate with the car running out of fuel unless I'm really, really careful. And I suppose, I wouldn't say I've miscalculated, I went off the same sort of stats, but 
I totally, totally underestimated this Maserati. It, yeah, blown away. I know I keep repeating myself, but I really am truly blown away. We're arriving at the entrance of the track with more than a quarter of a tank and apparently 304 kilometers of range remaining. So, but I think if I'd really, really gone really slowly and drove like Miss Daisy, I'd probably have been able to get 35, maybe 36 miles per gallon, which I just, I just can't get my head around it. I see, it's, yeah, absolutely incredible. What an amazing car. Ah! We're on the ring. We're on the bloody Nürburgring. So we're gonna take it nice and easy just to get going. I've lowered the tire pressures a little bit and we're running a brand new, fresh set of Michelin Pilot Sport 4S's. But wow, this is the clearest I've ever seen this track. This is amazing. And this place, again, just like the Autobahn, is an absolute must visit for any of you. Petrol heads watching. Round this left-hander, on the power, nice and early, all the way up to the red line. Speeding through 90 miles per hour now, 100 into fourth gear. Take this nice and tight, and I'm going to just decelerate on the uphill. 110 miles per hour there. This is a lovely corner. You can go flat around here. I'm just not quite experienced enough. And this, one of the fastest parts of the track, with quite a large braking zone at the end. 120 miles an hour is enough for me. I can feel a little bit of vibration through the brake pedal, so I don't want to push it too much harder. We've got a lot of lap to go. Power through, endless grip of these Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tyres. Absolutely fantastic. Ah, oh, oh, it just flows so beautifully. The paddles as well fix the steering column, just makes shifting so easy. I love this part, downhill into a depression and then uphill, feel a couple of Gs there. Wow, oh, the G-forces you feel. I, like many of you, have driven this lap hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times on the likes of Gran Turismo, Forza, Assetto Corsa. But honestly, nothing can prepare you for the G-forces, the elevation changes. You can't get any sense of that, really, from the video games. We've got a very fast Ferrari behind me, but I want to go for the carousel. It's an SF90 right on my chuff. We'll let him past. Wow. I know this was a very cheap Maserati, but if you told my childhood self that I'd be driving around on the Nordschleife in my Maserati, chasing down, well, not really chasing down, Porsches and Ferraris, I would have honestly laughed at you. This is such an incredible dream lived. <laughs> Up to the Audi Sport gantry. Ah, oh, yes, we did it. Not only did we drive here on one tank, but we've, this car, which is, everything was destined to fail with this thing. We've driven it here without any hitch. We've just completed a lap of the Nürburgring and I was pushing it pretty hard. And now I can put my, well, I don't want my heater seats, but I can whack the aircon up, crank a window, arm out the window and cruise down to get some food. I mean, ah, and guys, we've done the lap. We've been pushing it. My range estimated has gone down to 55 kilometers, but we've still got just under a quarter of a tank and we've averaged still 27.6 miles per gallon despite all of all of that. I, I can't believe, I actually can't believe we've just done that. That, I mean this, yeah. What an incredible day. What an incredible day. What an incredible car. Okay, well the car performed so well and I had so much fun that I thought it would be silly as we've come all the way here, not to do one more lap. And off we go again. This is such 
such a good car. I'm going to keep banging on about it, but if you're in that boat, which I think lots of my viewers are, that dreams of owning a car like this, but just doesn't dare take the risk, if this is anything to learn from today, is just go for it. And uh, I think talking helps me to focus in some weird way because I'm actually pushing the car quite hard now. I mean, it's responding incredibly. I mean, I'm so impressed. Third gear, 105 miles an hour. Fourth, 115 miles an hour. Wow, that was scary through there. On the brakes, gently into third gear. We'll carry a little bit more speed this time. There's a one series. I'm gonna do my first overtake in the Maserati. See you later. This bit always feels a little bit scary as you come over this crest. You can't see the track. You just have to trust that it's there. Oh, 125 miles an hour on the brakes. Brakes feel really good, actually. Really, really good. Yes, Maserati. Oh, come on, you b Yes! 120 miles an hour. Brake in a straight line. Take the left-hander. Feel the G-force, straighten the car up, brake again. Third gear, turning hard. No one coming up my chuff this time, so down into second. Hard on the power there, hard on the brakes. Turning, hit the apex, wave to the camera, straight into the right-hander, and hard on the power. Endless grip, endless grip. Refueling recommended, so only now, on this second pretty hard lap of the Nordschleife, have we got our fuel light? That <laughs> is absolutely remarkable. I was thinking we wouldn't even make it here, let alone do two bloody laps. Oh, get in there. What a thing, what a bloody car. Oh, power, 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 power. Come on, baby. 80 miles an hour, 90 miles an hour miles an hour, third gear still. I love how we can keep third gear all the way up to 110. And according to the car, we've got zero range of fuel. So, fingers crossed we don't actually conk out. Here comes the carousel. I don't have a SF90 up my chuff this time, so we can really commit to it. Let's see how fast we can go around here. I can't see my speedo. Ripping onto the wheel for dear life. Coming out of there at 60, that was quick. <laughs> what a thrill. I mean, in terms of things you can do with your pants on, this has to be up there with one of the best. Oh yeah, I'm gonna take these weird gloves off now. Thank you all so much for watching because without you guys watching, and of course without my amazing sponsors on this channel, um, literally I wouldn't be able to do this. I mean, it's simple as that. I wouldn't be able to afford to do this. So thank you all so much. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. I know that when I ask you, a lot more people do subscribe and it's so, so easy. We're really nearly at 100,000 subscribers and I think about 70% of you that watch regularly aren't subscribed. So if you could just hit that subscribe button, it would be amazing. So thank you all very, very much. I hope you've enjoyed this probably quite long video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. See you all very, very soon. So guys, I've just filled the car up here, just outside the nowhere ring. And despite all of that today, everything, all the driving, all the Euro tunneling, I even went back to the hotel and the two laps in the nowhere ring, the car only took 77 litres. It's a 90 litre tank, so we still have 13 litres left. Incredible.